Hello guys! This is May Angel Emmanuel Marzouk, your Miss Global United Philippines 2019-2020 and welcome back to this channel! So for today's video, I will be talking about my journey in this world of pageantry. I will be talking about when I started joining pageants and where and what are my awards if there are and what are my achievements so far so are you ready but before I start don't forget to click the subscribe button the bell icon to get notifications and always like our video comment down below if you have any suggestions or recommendations or whatever that you might want to say <laughs> all right let's start well as i've mentioned in my previous video i started joining pageants when i was 19 so that was way back two years ago after my graduation so it was may 3 2018 this is my very first town pageant and actually i was just forced kind of forced because <laughs> actually i was going to the local lady at that time and then my friend texted me that there is a pageant looking for someone and i just tried because why not <laughs> so it was may 3 2018 that was miss Luan 2018 i can't show any photos because I actually deleted them all because I was really embarrassed and I didn't know how to pose at that time. I don't know how to project, I don't know, whatever, I just don't know. It's my first and no one trained me or whatever. So, well, that was not bad actually because I bagged three minor awards which are Miss Social Media, Best in Festival Costume and Best in Talent. The next one is because I'm much braver than before <laughs> and um, thick-faced well um, let's just say that I tried leveling up so I joined Miss Soka Lady 2018 and I was bringing my municipality it's so ironic because it's Miss Soka Lady and I'm bringing Bulahiga Eastern somewhere that is kind of awkward and bringing somewhere into a Lady pageant so yeah, obviously I won't win at that time and it's not actually bad because I was part of the top seven and I bagged the award of best in talent so well next one is um, Miss Ecotourism at Palo Leite I forgot the date but it was sometime July or August I think I placed first runner-up I bagged three two awards best in fantasy guitar and best in talent now you might wondering why on my first three pageants i bagged the best in talent award well to tell you guys honestly i'm not singing i'm not dancing though i know how to sing my talent is a comedy monologue it's it's actually a piece that is written by myself and I tend to recollect all the taglines from Filipino movies and I combine them all I make a story and I act as funny as I could in front of the crowd well that is the time where my handlers in my makeup artists would deny me as their candidate because they would not actually expect that I would be doing that acting so funny in front of the crowd and the crowd would go wild so that's it I will give you a sample of this it's really awkward and I don't practice really I don't practice I just familiarize my lines then boom I'll just present it in front of the crowd and the end <laughs> all right my next one is actually representing my review center branch to a national pageant it's actually a national I guess because all of the branches nationwide are competing with each other so I was actually reviewing at CBRC Leyte because I took up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Mathematics and I reviewed in a review center of course at CBRC or Carl Belita Review Center and I represented Leyte actually I didn't screen for it because I was actually not yet get not yet over with the Misoka thing so I will just will they propose something to me that's very interesting and I was kind of fooled 
not full because at least the experience of Mr. BRC, Mr. and Mr. BRC is very, very amazing. And of course, Dr. Carl Balita is an amazing person and you can learn a lot from him. Well, I represented Mr. BRC Leite and there were that was my first time facing a huge crowd that I was drawn by their cheers and loud voices and screams that time I panicked I didn't know what to do because it's actually my first time facing a huge crowd and uh, it was a lot I mean I didn't bring my own makeup artist and I, I was with no one actually I was with no one I asked for someone to do my makeup and do my hair I just bring with me my things and that's it I actually got sick because I slept less I ate less because there were a lot of rehearsals and I went there the day before the pageant we ended our rehearsals at 1 a.m. and we started a pageant for 8 a.m. but we woke up at 5 a.m. it was just uh, a tiring and exhausting experience but well, that was fun I made it to the top 8 or top 6 out of 80 contestants I was able to get to the top 6 or 8 I don't know, I forgot it was actually on September 3, 2018 so the next one um, is actually Miss Pasai 2018 it's one of the town's largest pageant and um, I was kind of a, an import to them well a lot of them I mean most of the candidates are imports that was the first time that I got no clue what will be the question in that pageant uh, we didn't receive any paper or any notes or any pointers so we can look into and prepare ourselves for the question and answer portion and um, because I am promised to myself that I should really study more and read a lot of articles or books so I, so that my English would not be limited. <laughs> um, it was the time where I was very, very proud of myself. I made it to the top five. My answer was good. Yes. Why? Because the question was very familiar to me. I heard it once when I was watching in YouTube. It was a question from Miss Universe India, I guess. And I didn't answer the way she answered it. I actually um, took an idea from her answer and I improvised my own answer. And when it's already top five, I was actually expecting I'm, I'm gonna win because I was very confident. You know, the energy, you can tell yourself that you will win because this is it. And when there, I mean, when there comes again the question and answer portion, so that we could be ranked to our respective position, that was the most difficult question that I've ever received, I've ever heard. It was talking about politics, and I don't want to answer any questions that's related to politics, because you know I might offend some of the judges there and the point of views of other, of other people. I just want to be neutral. And if I'll answer it to base on my opinion, I could also offend someone's point of view or opinion. I was trying hard to compose myself an answer that would not hurt everybody. And I forgot my answer, but all I can remember is the person who asked me the question and the people who wasn't actually supporting me but the other candidates stood up and clapped their hands after I finished answering. <laughs> it was an amazing experience and I placed as the first princess I didn't make it to the crowd. At least I was the first runner-up and that was the best pageant I've ever had because that pageant taught me to be prepared, to be confident of myself and to do whatever that I could to show myself to themselves. It was a time that I wasn't embarrassed and ashamed of myself going out in a two-piece during the swim set competition. I was very, very confident at that time and was very, very proud of myself because I was already able and learned to just showcase myself and embrace my imperfections no matter what people would say I would not just uh, mind them 
And I bagged the awards, um, best in festival costume, and best in Filipino attire. Actually, I forgot to tell you that I became a festival queen two times representing our tribo or our tribe in Borangan City and in Tacloban City. In Borangan City, we play second runner-up and it was before Miss Silka. Um, I rejoined the Pintada Sajan Festival 2018 and that was the most terrifying experience that I ever had because I mean I was being pressured with the Mystic Apaja with my review and with this festival competition but I did manage myself to perform them all and so far it was the best experience and, and it was the most fulfilling experience that I ever had being a festival queen of my tribe of my hometown also moving on after miss basai two days after miss basai was our examination for teachers and to tell you guys honestly i was very very tired at that time because i was joining pageants while i were well while i was reviewing so a day after our exam imagine miss basai after two days examination, after one day, I joined another pageant as B1 is for summer. Binibining silangang turismo. I binibining silangang summer turismo. So with the binibining silangang summer turismo, I placed first runner up again, and I bagged the awards best in festival costume and best in formal attire, I guess, or casual wear. I forgot. I got two awards. So that was the last pageant in the year 2018 and I started early in the year 2019 at Southern Lake. Tabang Southern Lake. Yes. Um what did they call it? Um the festival Oh no, the Tabango Tambayayong Festival Queen 2019. Yes, wherein I met Kyla Sanchez. Hi there, Miss Cosmos Philippines. I met her for the first time. Yes, I w we were placed top five together, but there were only three positions. She was one of them, and I just say bye bye. <laughs> I wasn't able to get to the top three because all of the contestants were really, really good. I don't know where to place myself. All of them were very competitive, confident enough to speak for themselves and to showcase their body and everything that they got. And I was just like, oh no, I think I'm gonna go home with no awards. Or I don't know, maybe I'm not gonna make it to the top five. But hey, I made it to the top five with one award, Miss Swab. Well, according to them, Miss Swab is for a candidate who embodies this confidence in walking and in in showcasing herself on the stage. And I was like, huh? Did I do that? But I'm very thankful that I got that award. At least I didn't went to backstage with no sash on my body. Or whatnot. <laughs> so the next one is the MSE category. Miss MSE, yes. I was one of the queens. Uh, we got Miss MSE, Miss Splash, and Miss Sansan. I was Miss Splash, and uh, it was my first time wearing full wig. So what else? Oh, my best pageant or the most memorable one is the Miss Pintadas 2019. We were actually invited and our supportive municipal mayor informed me that I should represent our municipality to Miss Pintadas because it's actually open um, for all municipalities in Pintadas in Region 8. And so far it's my memorable pageant ever because I got a lot of memories, I got a lot of experiences, I got a lot of lessons from there and then um, a lot of people were actually expecting me to win because I was very confident, just like Miss Basai, I was very confident. Every time I go on stage, I show myself, it's like I'm playing the game, like yes, this is it, so why not give it my best 
and do whatever that I can. It started with a tiring production number and we got this just regular stage that just fits 24 ladies. 24 la 24 ladies. Miss Teen and Miss. 12 Miss Teen, 12 Miss. And uh, I was actually number two. Imagine top, I mean, first six of Miss Teen, first six of Miss, alternate. Hoes will be asking us questions while we are still catching our breath. Just like that. And then when it's my turn, I was the fourth one to be asked because I was number two with Miss. Miss Teen first and Miss. The hose was really blunt or sarcastic and I don't know, but it was actually kind of funny because when she asked me the question, she never repeated it again. Usually they would repeat it twice, but she never repeated the question to me because she said that it was the easiest question that they got and I should really know what to answer because this is the most common question. I was like, well, I was catching my breath. I was like, Okay, all right, this is the easiest question as you said. All right, I'm, I'm gonna answer it. Well, I got 30 seconds and well, I'm so catching my breath. I keep on talking, I keep on talking of what's in my mind and to compose an answer that would really fit to hit the question. I was actually chubby at the time, really. I got the confidence in my arms and uh, fluffy cheeks and I got no collarbone. I mean, I got I got a collarbone, obviously, but my collarbone was not very obvious. Because I was a chubby girl at that time. My handler is very, very mad at me because the swimsuit doesn't fit. I had to adjust the swimwear in my butt just to fit it in here, just to just so we can pull it up. And my gown, I look so fat in my gown, but I didn't care <laughs> as long as I can go outside and then finish my performance with it. Well, I got the best handler at the time. He, he was actually the person who encouraged me to embrace what I got, my potential in this pageantry. And uh, we were just helping with each other. He was fixing my hair. I am retouched. I'm doing a retouch. I was dressing myself up. He was helping. He was applying some lotion into my body. I was awarded that award, the People's Choice Award, Miss Congeniality, and Miss Night Refuel. So there's actually two of us in the stage who were in cold yet. It was the winner and me. We were both holding hands and we were very so we were, we were actually very confident. And she was rooting for me to win. I was rooting for her to win. And when the host announced who the winner is, I didn't feel sad. Though I feel a little bit disappointed because I was actually almost there. Almost there. Like a little, just a little push. I was going to win. But I placed first runner up with three awards. It was actually very great because, as I've said, it was a very memorable one. I made my people proud, and it was my first time having a motorcade with the winners. And I was like, hey, I Miss Pentata's first runner up. I was so very proud of myself at that time. Really, it was June. I got a chat. I got a message from Tito Norman inviting me to join Philippine Global Queens and I was actually doubting or um, considering not to join because I was actually already working and I got a lot of absences already with the Miss Pintadas and I think I might be terminated if I have absences again. I was actually scared and embarrassed that I'm gonna go for a national pageant. Am I really serious? Am I just brave enough to go for national pageants? Where in fact I got four pageants where I placed first runner up and then I'm gonna go with national pageants. Like, hello Angelique, are you serious? So I got there with the press presentation. We stayed at Manila for one week. Every day we got a lot of activities in rehearsals. We don't have enough time to sleep and you actually don't have enough time to eat 
actually you can eat if you do know how to sneak to get your food and eat well it was actually fun and I learned how to observe my co-candidates I learned how to deal with them do it it was really actually hard why I know two dialects in one language English Bisaya and Waray Waray and it's it was hard for me to speak in Tagalog why because I was used to um, speaking in Bisaya and usually when you speak Bisaya it's really hard for us to speak in Tagalog we can't find any words that could fit to describe our feelings or what what our emotions if I was used to speaking in Waray Waray I could actually talk to them in Tagalog fluently because in Waray Waray um, all the words there can be easily converted or translated into Tagalog and it was re it's really easy to construct a sentence from Waray Waray to Tagalog however if your last dialect spoken is Bisaya it's really hard if you will ask Cal Sanchez which she is really a Bisayang doko well she would say the same thing it's easier for us to speak in English rather than to speak in Tagalog that's why for the whole event activities I was just talking to my co waray warais and to those ladies who can speak in Bisaya because I'm not really confident in speaking Tagalog and I don't know what to say in Tagalog so to wrap my experience in flipping global queens it is my first ever national pageant well, Mr. and Mr. VRC is a national pageant, but this is a national pageant where winners would have a chance to represent the country in an international pageant. I didn't expect that I would be called as one of the winners. Why? We got 20 potential queens there. All of them answered the questions perfectly. And there is only 8 positions or crowns and only eight ladies will be crowned and while the hosts are starting to announce the winners i was actually doing this thing like like this like this like this like you can see well just forget it well while i am holding my waist i'm doing this thing to fold my fingers and counting of how many ladies who has potentials left and how many crowns left so I was doing this thing like oh no I got no chances the possibilities and the probabilities are getting limited are getting lesser and lesser and lesser and when the host announced who is the winner for the Miss Global United Philippines I didn't expect that like I was actually rooting for the other girls I was actually facing them and smiling with them because it was actually okay for me to be part of, of the top 20 it was actually okay and when they called my number 37 I was hesitant to move forward because we got there 27 37 and 47 47 did really a great job in the Q&A portion she nailed the question and I think I just misheard the host. I was not actually about to go front because maybe it's 47, I might be Colombia zoned. I waited for my name to be called and, and when they mentioned my name, that is the time where I felt very happy. It was a speechless moment for me. Because I was actually telling myself, if I go home without a family, I would not show the pageant anymore. I would focus on working and earning money. And it's time for me to pass the responsibility to my daughter, to the younger generation. And never did I expect that I would be one of the queens. And I'm very thankful. I'm really, really thankful. And I'll do my best to represent the country this coming July. For the Miss Global United, I will do my best. If I did best in this national pageant, I will do better than the best that I gave. 
in this session of passion. And really, it was overwhelming. I received a lot of emotions at that night. I never felt tired for the entire week. And when I was crowned, it was like, okay, I opened a new door again in my life. And I'm going to enter. It's like my whole life change a little bit but I'm still that girl who is funny and I'm still that girl who is straightforward I'm still that girl who don't wear makeup every day to go out to go to work to meet friends to go eat out so that's it that was my journey in the world of pageantry and there's more coming so support me guys while I'm trying my best to be who I am and showcase myself on the stage and talk for good causes and be an example and I hope that you learned something from my journey from my experiences and if ever that you're planning to join pageants in the future please 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 don't compete with other girls compete with yourself observe them observe yourself Whatever your capabilities and abilities you have, show it to the world, show it to the crowd. And just be confident every time. Make the pageant a game and make yourself as a winner in that game. Always think of yourself as a queen as it will motivate you to always do your best while you are going outside in that stage. So that's for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my storytelling. <laughs> Don't forget to again leave thumbs up, comment, share this video and of course subscribe and click the button icon to get notifications. Once again, this is May Angela Emmanuel Marzuk, your Miss Global United Philippines 2019-2020. See you in my next video. Bye!